Good evening guys, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Sly Geordie and welcome back to F1 23 My Team Career Mode for the Monaco Grand Prix. There's the special livery and here is the standings, here are the standings for this year, uh, for, well, this episode I suppose. Max Verstappen has won three races in a row to the point that we are now equal on points going into this race. And obviously, if you've been watching recently, you will know that we've been struggling with the ICE. Uh, so we can pretty much put it down to that. And I'm still not going to be replacing it for this uh, race. I genuinely just don't think there's any point in doing that. The ICE really affects the car in medium and high speed sections. And Monaco is the slowest average um like, Monaco has the sl the slowest average of speeds in the entire F1 calendar. So I think we should push the ICE one more race around Monaco. And um, we'll just see what happens. Maybe, just maybe, this will prove to be a genius strategy. I don't know. But we've got other parts that we will need to keep an eye on very soon. We might even be replacing multiple parts going into next episode. But... Uh, yeah, got a few storylines going into this, of course, being equal on points with Verstappen. It's going to be our last race on this really worn ICE. And it's going to be Felipe Drogovic's last race on this current contract. And, as you guys know, as what I've been saying all series so far, this is it. We wanted to give the F2 driver a year and a half. We are now halfway through this second season we're halfway through season two so this is Drogovic's final chance and what a scenario this is once again we are going around wet Monaco and it looks as though it's not going to slow down for a while so if you guys remember last uh, in season one pretty sure we started on inters and we ended up going on to softs uh, it's not going to be the case in this one. It looks like we're going to be starting on full wets and maybe, if we're lucky, going on to the Inters. This rivalry with Verstappen is almost over, but um, I've seen in this game that it can end after qualifying, unfortunately. So, um, it might not even be that. I don't know. Like It might even end at like Q1 or Q2. If Verstappen finishes ahead of us in any of those sessions, it's going to happen. Uh or he's just going to gain enough points regardless, even if we manage to um, best him throughout this whole race weekend. But of course, we're going through and getting some new R&D parts now, obviously. Um, yeah, we're doing really good uh, so far. We're actually moving up the order, as you can see. We are now ahead of Alpha Tori, and we're not going to stop here. I want to get ahead of Alpha Romeo. I want to get ahead of Williams. I want to make sure that whoever is the second driver going into next episode, that they have the best possible chances from next episode onwards. So we're going to get a major aerodynamics upgrade, um, and yeah, other parts included as well. I sped that part up, of course, but uh, yeah. If you didn't know what they were, you can either pause it or you can wait till next episode when we get them. And the AI is having a bit of an aneurysm here going into our first lap around the Principality here. And that's because we have people behind us either on and out... No, they're all on out laps uh, because I pretty much went out as quick as I could going into Q1. So here we go, turn one around Monaco. Um... We can really, really push the limits on this track, to be honest. I actually really do enjoy going around Monaco on this year's F1 game. I don't know what it is about it, uh, but I seem to be really good at it, especially in wet weather conditions. So, um, <clears throat> don't expect Monaco to be removed off the calendar in the F1 game anytime soon for me. Uh, I really do like going around this track and maybe in future uh, in the future we might actually do some special episodes like uh, I know people in the past have done like 100% race length, uh, um, races around Monaco which I feel like could be really cool I don't know if I'd want to do it recorded though because Monaco for some reason seems to have a bit of an issue with recording skipping you're actually going to see some of that issue in this one yes I've still not moved on to the PS5 but um, I pretty much recorded my last episode that I will be doing on the PS4 now because I'm actually fully 
um, like all guns blazing on the video that I need to do to be done with the PS4. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much going to be um, this episode and then the next one. So the next episode, so the Canadian Grand Prix episode will be the last one um, on the PlayStation 4. So the first episode we do on the PlayStation 5 will be the home race, uh, the British Grand Prix. So that would be cool. But I decided to not do another race. Uh, I mean, another um, lap around Monaco for Q1. I felt like we did good enough. And honestly, a lot of people really caught up quite quickly. And Drugovic, not really the worst. He wasn't actually that far off of uh, getting into Q2. Like, it, it was actually really close, to be honest. Um, not even a tenth. Like, under a tenth away from Q2. But he really does need to improve. He needs to have a good race. If he does not have... Um, you know, a race where he gets near the points in this one. I'm giving up on him. We're going to move on to a new teammate. And uh, for a lot of you, it might be uh, well past you, honestly. Because uh, we could have got a much better teammate going into Season 2. But um, I just really wanted to push the F2 drivers as much as I could. And I think I'll still do try and do that every year. We're not going to go through the newcomer storyline on next year's game uh, because we've already kind of done that with this one so we'll do that with um, we'll, we'll go midfield challenger or whatever but going into this second lap of Q2 we had to go past a load of people and now uh, we're going to get into a hard part because look who it is in front of us Carlos Sainz uh, a championship challenger of, our, of ours actually has a chance to impede us and we dive bomb to get ahead of him just before the hairpin we've taken some floor damage but I think that was well worth it, honestly, because uh, we've gained time going into that. Um, not because of that, but because uh, of the fact that we overtook signs before the hairpin, and we were, we managed to get the hairpin on our own. And uh, yeah, we're doing really, really good on this lap. Seven tenths up on our original uh, Q2 lap, which is insane. Did we do that on scrub tires? I don't know. I don't even think. Did I record it? I'm not sure. Um, I wasn't paying attention, but <laughs> here we go. Like eight tenths up, pushing on nine tenths as we now go down the main straight one final time in Q2, and it is the fastest lap. Um, so we do take the fastest lap of the session in Q2. Uh, Verstappen in eighth. Uh, Perez has actually crashed out of Q2. Well, not actually crashed out, but um, metaphorically he's crashed out as he is in P13 in that Red Bull, which is just not good at all. The Red Bull, of course, is the, the best car going into this season, um, as evidenced uh, to why Verstappen has kind of been dominating recently. Ferrari's been up there, but they keep tripping over each other. Uh, last episode, of course, was probably the worst of it at Imola. They actually crashed into each other and ruined each other's race, so uh, not good at all, but... Yeah, we now go into Q3. Um, this is going to be it. This is uh, make or break time, really. We've been doing so well around Monaco, just like Season 1. Um, it's proving this strategy correct. Now, I don't know if it's going to really impede us in the race, but in qualifying, not swapping out the old worn ICE for a new one has actually proven to be a really, really good decision. As we now go round the final corner, down the main straight, once again, what's it going to be? It's going to be a P3, so uh, not a very good time, definitely a lot more time to find. Um, as I'm now going to check um, the ICE, of course, it's gone up a lot of percentages, because not just qualifying has been going on, but also the practice sessions, and you know me, I like to thoroughly milk the practice sessions for all they're worth, not just because I enjoy the game that much, but also because, um, you know, I, I try to get as much R&D points as I possibly can to give this car the best chance it can possibly have to improve. But here we go, the final lap going into Q3 here, and uh, it's been a really good first turn. So maybe we, that first lap was on scrub tyres, I don't know, but uh, that original lap was good enough for P4 so far. Maybe other races haven't done their first lap, I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, it feels really good so far. We almost, we're almost three tenths up. Uh, we're, we've gone into four tenths up, almost five tenths up. We're now past five tenths, so 
definitely that original lap was on scrub tyres, so yeah. We go through the tunnel now, pushing on five temps. We want in, we're wanting to get that. We're wanting to get the fastest lap around Monaco once again as we go over those curbs, but um, yeah, the recording skipping bug again. I'm sorry about that, but it was a purple second sector as we now jump over those curbs, but cutting it a bit too much. Um, more than I would have liked, um, looking to not get floor damage there, but not that it would have mattered as we are now going down the main straight, one final time in qualifying, almost seven tenths up, and it is Fantastic. You've got the fastest lap once again. Um, not as surprising as last time, of course, uh, season one, of course, we were one of the slower cars on the grid. We were really scratching and clawing for just P8, P7, um, but season two, we're expecting it. It's what we want. It's we want to at least get up there in that top, at least on the second row. So um, yeah, and look at that, Verstappen all the way at the bottom in tenth place. What happened there? Almost a second and a half off of our pace. I don't know if Verstappen had an issue, uh, if he's dealing with engine wear, if. You know, he was on scrub tyres. I don't know. Maybe he was stuck in traffic. I don't know. That's just odd for someone who just won the previous three races. But anyway, let's go to the grid. A proper road race. And in the true meaning of the word. That's how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but we still race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. There is no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We already see the lowest average speeds of the season here at the Circuit de Monaco, and they'll be even lower in the difficult conditions today. 19 corners make up this famous two mile track. And with the rain, it'll be even harder than usual to get that critical heat into the tyres. So don't be surprised if we see a safety car at some point during the Grand Prix. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. It's the owner driver then in pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid we have, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Norris, Gasly, Leclerc, Bottas, Hamilton, Verstappen, Ocon, Teo Porcher, Perez, Joe, Sonoda, Liam Lawson, Magnussen, Drogovic, Sargent, De Vries, Hulkenberg, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Well, here we go, and we're in rainy Monaco. A full wet race. Wow, it's about time we got something like this. We're now halfway through season two, and um, yeah, the weather's just been really dry for literally the whole season, which I don't like, and hopefully at some point we get an update where we can make it a little bit more unpredictable. But anyway, formation lap, let's get it underway. Here we go then, the formation lap is underway. There are wet conditions here today. Each driver will no doubt be mindful of the wet surface as they prepare to race around the track. As the cars come back to the grid to line up for the start of the race, each driver will be wanting to get the best start they possibly can. And they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium, failing that within the points. Well, as we now go up to the grid, of course, uh, possible race strategies, as it says below, it's not expected that we'll even move on to the inters. It's actually expected that we'll either do the full race on these wet tyres, or we'll at least have a one-stop. Onto another set of full wets. So, um, yeah, could be a full wet Monaco. And uh, if you saw the episode last year, I was pretty good at that. So, 
Uh, yeah, it's, it seems as though we might have an easier time of it than last time. Of course, we had to choose the right time to be able to go onto the softs. But we're not going to have to worry about dry tyres at all, apparently. So, uh, yeah. Without further ado, let's get this underway. As we go up to five, red, light, signs and Piastri behind us, of course. Russell and Norris are there as well. Norris actually overtakes Russell as signs tries to... Um, get in front of us, but of course we've had a really good launch, and uh, George Russell actually comes out on top against Lando Norris there, and Piastri stays in third, so Oscar Piastri is definitely doing a lot better in terms of qualifying, um, there's a chance that Oscar Piastri might be in for a shout in challenging for some championship, uh, or for challenging for the championship of course, um, if not this season, definitely next season, but we go round the hairpin now. Carlos Sainz is, uh, it looks like he's pretty close to us, uh, but we're actually pulling away a little bit. So, um, yeah, you might discover in this race, uh, and you might have discovered okay, it yourself if you played the game yourself, that um, the AI isn't very good around Monaco on the wets for some reason, uh, or even on Inters for that matter. Just in wet conditions, they really don't seem to be that good at all. Uh, I don't know why that is, but... Um, yeah, we're obviously going to take advantage of that. P1 right now. Anything can happen, though. We could, of course, Monaco is the hardest track to drive on. We could actually, well, I'd say it's the second hardest. I'd say Jeddah's actually arguably more difficult. But, uh, yeah, we could actually lose a front wing. You get really close to the walls here. And Sainz actually almost lost the front wing himself. He actually hit the back of us a little bit there. Not too much in terms of damage, though. So I'm pretty sure he could carry on. But, yeah, as we go across the line to uh, finish our first lap uh, with another recording skip of course but we've set the fastest right, lap there we're half a second ahead of Carlos yeah, Sainz is our engineer complains to us about our worn parts I know I know I'm leaving them there on purpose Mark come on uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah it's looking really good so far as um, we now double check the ICE it's on 75% so uh, hopefully we don't get any really serious issues going into uh, the rest of this race but yeah half a second ahead of signs it's feeling pretty comfortable right now as we now skip ahead to lap six and just as i said uh yeah very comfortable six seconds ahead of carlos signs so we've been driving really 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 well here um with the ICE now on 76 percent we cross the line to start off the seventh lap and there's a safety car so um yeah that almost seven seconds worth of, um, you know, gap that we pretty much built up through our amazing driving, um, it's all going to come down to nothing, because now there's a safety car that's going to bunch up the whole field, so, um, yeah, uh, this is a good a chance as any to switch tyres, so I'm going to be checking here, and, um, the engineer pretty much says that full wets seem like the best tyre for now, so... Uh, we're sticking on the full wet, but here's a replay of what caused the yellow flag, of course, from the viewing of Drogovic. He got it, um, great view of it. Liam Lawson spun out, chasing after, I think it was his teammate, I think he was chasing down, uh, Magnussen, but, um, yeah, he spun out, completely tore off his front wing, and a wheel came off with it, and Lawson was out, just like that. So, yeah, Lawson not doing too good in the Haas. Um, as we now get ready to uh, kick off our um, second rest uh, our restart of this race, I, I suppose, the safety car restart anyway. Um, so yeah, the field's all bunched up, more or less looking the same. Um, it is, worth to, it's, is worthwhile to note though that some drivers towards the back of the grid uh, well, obviously towards the back of the grid now, have actually chosen to go on Inters early. So, uh, they've actually, they're anticipating uh, that the race will be able to go on to intermediate conditions. And uh, as you can see, Oscar Piastri is another one of those drivers. Pretty strange that he's done it this late though. So, um, yeah, maybe that's going to really impede on his race. But, uh, yeah, Carlos Sainz hasn't had the best of corners there. And we've actually gained a second on him. Of course, we used the RS at the start as well. Uh, so yeah, it looks as though, um, well the engineer was telling me the same thing, but now he was unsure whether Inters or Wet uh, were the stronger tyre to go with, and so I waited until the end of the lap 
Um, I was about to um, get near the pits and we were asking him again and this time he says that Inters are the fastest tyre. So there we go, going into the pits, looking for those intermediates and um, I have to double check real quick to make sure that um, we're actually on those Inters because it was actually going to put us on full wet. So luckily it can switch midway through the pit lane apparently as we now go onto those Inters and yeah. Everyone P14 downwards has actually switched to those Inters. And Oscar Piastri blitz past us. So, uh, yeah, he actually undercut us there. So, um, yeah, it didn't look as though that was the um, the optimal strategy, waiting until uh, the safety car went in to pretty much follow it in and pit for Inters. But, yeah, apparently that was. Piastri sped past us and now has a 3.3 second lead over us, which... We are going to try and cut down, of course, as we now uh, try and get a good line over, uh, like, through that chicane, I suppose. But, um, you know, we cut it a little bit too much. But, um, uh, but fortunately, um, that doesn't um, impede our chances of catching up to Piastri. It doesn't count it as an illegal overtake. And even if it did, I feel like we would have overtook him anyway as we now look to... Um, overtake Sergio Perez we're gonna have an audacious dive there and unfortunately you guys didn't get to see that because of the PS4 recording issue uh, skipping issue again I really hope the PS5 doesn't have that issue if it does I'm going to cry but yeah there's the overtake Logan Sargent sets the fastest lap then it's Nico Hulkenberg so it will probably be us very soon as it is now becoming very clear that the Inters are the fastest tyre. But you're going to see something a bit strange. A lot of these guys are going to be staying out on wets. Albon actually sees the writing on the wall. He doesn't want to lose too much time. And so he actually lets us pass. So that's good. And um, we're now looking to get past the Alfa Tauri of Nick De Vries, Who hasn't been replaced in uh, our game just yet. Of course if you start the career mode now. It's going to be Daniel Ricciardo in that Alfa Tauri, But... We started pretty much at the beginning of this game's life cycle, and now Fatari just haven't replaced Nick DeFries in, in our, you know, story. So, yeah. And, I mean, you know, good on him. In Season 1, he scored a fair amount of points. You know, um, DeFries' strategy sometimes really correlates with some of the issues that happen. And, uh, yeah, he gets a really good chance at scoring points, so... Yeah, but most of the time he's towards the back of the grid. He's worse than a lot of the F2 drivers. So, yeah, uh, as evidenced by Felipe Drugovic being right here. He's in P10. So, so far so good for the Brazilian. If he finishes at least P13, which will be uh, an equaling of his best position ever. Actually, no. If he finishes P12, I, I think, my, think that was my thought process. Um, if he finishes like P12, at least very close to the points, then uh, yeah, uh, we'll keep him on for the at least the rest of the season. But yeah, we've made that overtake there. I didn't want to impede his timing too much at all, uh, as we now set the fastest purple sector. Um, hopefully, Drogovic can keep that P10. Obviously, he's still on the wet, so he does have that advantage. And um, hopefully, he doesn't pit again. There'd be no point in doing it at this point. Because uh, all he's going to do is lose position. So maybe he probably should have pitted for Inters first. But you know what? Whatever. There you go. There is a beautiful overtake on Kevin Magnussen. So that counts. That is six overtakes and counting around Wet Monaco. So now we look to chase after the, um, Lewis Hamilton. Who is stuck behind the Alfa Romeo of Guan Yu Zhou. So... We are catching up really, really quick here, and that is a big advantage we have. The wets at the front are going to be holding them up, and Hamilton actually moved out of the way of our little audacious dive bomb. Our brakes didn't work enough, and we've actually taken some wing damage. I'm having a little check around the car right now. It seems to be okay, so it, it only seems to be minor damage, fortunately, and uh, we seem to be making it through these corners. A little bit more stiff-like, but um, yeah. These inters definitely help negate some of that as we make a beautiful pass on Guan Yu Zhou and now look to um, overtake the Alpines who have both decided to stick on, to the, on the wets and um, so far the strategy is working well. They're in the top five so good for them I suppose as we now um, uh, try to get past the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. 
who um, I think, has he ran out of ERS? I don't know what that blipping red light is. Uh, did any of the other cars have that? I don't know. If so, I'm only just noticing it now. But uh, yeah, these overtakes, if we can uh, get them in good positions, then uh, yeah, they're going to be quite easy as I'm trying to look for any gap to get round Ocon, but he seems to be covering off uh, he seems to be defending quite well, but now onto the main straight with DRS. Well, not with DRS, sorry, but with ERS. Um, we actually managed to make the overtake on Ocon, but he's not letting it go, and he actually ends up bumping us. He really didn't want to let that go, did he? He just didn't want to give us any space at all. He should have backed out of that, but instead he tried to get down the inside, and there was just absolutely no way I would have outgripped him regardless. But now, going through the tunnel, beautiful overtake on Charles Leclerc. Uh, Leclerc's going to try and keep his head there and we're going to really, really be on the edge of track limits there as Lando Norris did try to get out of our way, bless him. Uh, he did hit the wall, luckily it was only his wheel though, so um, yeah, no damage for him. And now, look who it is, Carlos Sainz. Um, we've actually caught up to the leader, this is amazing, what a drive this has been. How many overtakes was that? 12 overtakes. And now we're about to make it 13 as we finally overtake Carlos Sainz for the lead. And that's pretty much all she wrote. Um, the track started drying up a lot more, of course, which just made everybody faster. Um, well, apparently just me. Because like I said earlier, the AI is just not good around Wet Monaco. I, I kind of regret saying that because... You might have seen the writing on the wall, especially if you watched uh, last year, uh, last season's Monaco Grand Prix in this series, because, wow, just so easy, 33 seconds ahead, I haven't changed the difficulty at all, our engine is really worn, but yeah, there you go, a really dominating victory here. Um, maybe it would have been better had people um, not been stuck behind people on wets, had people pitted for inters earlier, but yeah. Apparently, um, they didn't, and um, yeah, a lot of the wets actually ended up pitting on lap 24, which means this was Felipe Drogovic's last race for Sly Team Racing, unfortunately. Um, yeah, just wasn't good enough, um, which sucks, because Drogovic in real life is actually pretty good, uh, but he's, he's an F2 driver in the F1 game. They're just not going to be good, and we haven't improved the car enough since the beginning of season one as opposed to the rest of the grid we've tried doing as much as we could of course uh, so much so that um we're actually like we're able to compete with pretty much the top guys that's how close the grid really is but uh, the ai seem to um really stick close to a vehicle's performance on how it should be and Drogovic just yeah at the near the back of the grid because of r d so it is what it is but we take another win here within the Monaco Grand Prix. Verstappen was nowhere to be seen. So uh, we actually retake the lead of the championship. Verstappen was literally like just one position ahead of us away from overtaking us in the championship. But it has not happened and we are now extending our lead once again. Tell me, Ant. How do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the podium right now. It's been an interesting Grand Prix, that's for sure. Well, there you go. For the second season in a row, we have won the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm, I'm really hoping next season it's not going to be another wet one because they're too easy. I'm going to be quite honest. They are too easy. And I don't want to turn up the difficulty when I really shouldn't be doing that for the rest of the races. Like, <laughs> this is like I'm at the highest I really should be going right now. Uh, otherwise, obviously, you know. I start to really fall behind on, you know, the fact I'm using, I'm on a controller and, you know, got some assists on, obviously. So, 
Uh, yeah, we're at the highest that I really feel like I can go currently um, without running into some serious issues. But yeah, too easy. Way too easy. So um, the AI really needs to be buffed uh, for Wet Monaco because, yeah, if another Wet Monaco happens in Season 3, I might have to switch off. Um, you know, the Grand Prix, which I don't want to do because I really like Monaco and I did say earlier that I want to keep it on the calendar but if it ends up being too easy, it's going to end up being too predictable and I'm not going to want to make that content. You guys are not going to want to watch watch that content, I don't think, quite simply because of that. Maybe if it ends up being the case, we could probably, you know, mess around and experiment with the Monaco Grand Prix in future if this keeps happening like maybe we can pick for softs um, a lot later in the race um, like we could have here I don't know but yeah we have retook the lead of the championship but Drogovic unfortunately is in P16 so um, yeah that marks the end of his contract with Slide Team Racing so um, yeah it does suck uh, I really wanted to push him as far as I could, and I really have, but he just hasn't impressed, and uh, I need a better teammate, um, especially, like, I'm not going to be able to challenge for the Constructors this season, but I want an end goal, like, the end goal of this career mode is to at least have one Constructors under our belt, and for us to do that, we need a better teammate, so, goodbye, Drogovic, it was nice having you, but, um, yeah, next episode, we're going to be having a new teammate guys thank you all so much for watching this episode of f123 my team career mode if you guys liked it be sure to hit that like button as hard as you possibly can comment share and subscribe and i will see you all in the next video until next time peace Did you think it was over? <laughs> For those of you who are watching right at the end here, um, yeah, you get a special clip here as now we're going to announce our new teammate for Season 2. Um, for the second half of Season 2. And unfortunately, I wanted to get Hulkenberg, but we can't get him. But the next best thing is Lance Stroll. Kicked out of F1 after he only scored 10 points last season with Aston Martin. Fernando Alonso, by comparison, scored about like 100, I'm pretty sure, or close to it. So Stroll was kicked out of Aston Martin uh, in favor of Theo Por uh, Theo Porsche. But we are now going to give the disgraced Lance Stroll a second chance in F1. We're going to put him in the STR 2 seat. And look at that improvement, 95 Overall, Lance Stroll will be making his debut next episode for Sly Team Racing. Stay tuned.